Welcome back YouTube. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Skills and More. Um, today we actually are going to go over melt temperature. How to do a melt temperature, how to check melt temperature, the, the parameters that they use, different ones. They have all kinds of different things out there in the market. They even have this puck. I've never really used it ever, but it's magnetic. You put your parameter or needle in it and then you stick it on the back of the sprue bushing and you run your carriage into it and then you inject into that and that gives you a more better uh, melt temperature reading but I'm old school so I do it the old-fashioned way okay so let me show you guys some things here let me turn the camera around over here so let me set this here so you have these different ones so these are all different ones that we have here at this place um, so this is one so you'd use they have all kinds of different ones this is an old school one here um this is a fluke so this one here is like a little reader you use like you can do the surface temperature on the mold you'd shoot a laser beam and uh you can do the surface temperature of the mold so you can get a mold reading of how hot your mold is plus you could get your barrel temperature so you'd purge the material out put the gun right into the material somehow um i don't really like that that much it's not as accurate as i think uh, definitely want to use ppe you know hot gloves sleeves uh glasses make sure you got everything you need there um so this one here is a parameter this one here is a little bit different so this one's got a surface probe so this probe right here You'd actually take this probe here and you'd put it on the surface temperature of the mold. Then you can get readings of different areas on the mold. So let's say you have an area on your mold that's really hot. You might not be getting water there. You might have a channel that's clogged up or something. So one half of your mold might be hotter than the other half. You can check it with this and it'll give you a reading all the way across. So that's one way to check your surface temperature on your mold. So what you do is you'd hook it into here and give you your reading. You come across here on this. This is a little bit newer one. You have different types of needles. So you have a needle that's a real hard needle and then you have a flimsy needle. Um, the difference is one acts faster than the other. So what you do is you purge your material out, grab the material with your heat glove. You can purge it onto cardboard or onto something to where you can get a hold of it a lot easier. Stick your parameter into there and keep moving it around and take the highest reading that you got. Then what you want to do is you want to do that like three to five times and then average it out you know what you're gonna do is you're gonna grab that material out move this around a couple times then do another shot do the same thing again write down your readings each time and then what you'll do is you'll take that and then that'll give you what your temperature is going to be because let's say your barrel temperatures are you're doing a reverse profile so maybe you're starting at the very front and you're going 450 430 or 440 430 420 and then your rear zone's like 380 okay um what could happen is is maybe you're not getting the right melt temperature for that type of material so this is one way to check that and then plus they'll say you're having issues with you know the part warping or anything like that you can take temperatures on your on the you know on the mold itself so i wanted to show you guys a little bit of uh different types of material i wrote this all down the other day so i wanted to show you guys this so <clears throat> what this is is it gives you guys the types of material the, the melt temperature range in celsius and in fahrenheit and then it gives you the mold temperature range over here and it this is what we, you'd take and you'd have your mold temperature on for the water going through the mold okay um there are 29 different types of material that are a base type of material, just to let you guys know. But there are over 400 different types of material that are the same material, but they have so many different additives in it. So you might have materials that have glass, you might have materials that have talc, you might have materials that have um, blowing agent in it. I mean, there's just so many types of different materials out there. But look, I wanted to show you this. I used to use this material here, which is called a peak material. Mm -hmm. You can see the melt range on this is 350 to 390 Celsius, which is 602 to 734 degrees Fahrenheit. We used to run this with a hot oil machine where I used to work out a long time ago. 
And what they would do is they'd actually take and they'd make Gil Barco parts. So the Gil Barco part that you'd run would actually be in, um, if you go to your gas pumps and you go to the gas pump, the little pump thing that you use to put the gas into the pump, that's actually what they would make was that real hard piece that goes in there. So this is a thermal set material. So once you shoot it, you cannot regrind this material back up. You cannot do nothing with it at all. So it's very, very hard, very stiff, very hard to break. I mean, it is very tough, but they use it. If you ever go to a gas pump, just look at it. It's called Gil Barco. And they make all these little things that go inside of that to actually squeeze the trigger to where it pumps the gas into your car, okay? So, but I wanted to go over a little bit more of this to show you guys. So, we use here, we use polypropylene, and we use a copolymer here. So, you can see the temperatures on it are a little different. We run on the low end of everything. We try to stay on the low end of everything. So, our barrel temperatures that we run, we run a reverse profile here, and we start off with the front barrel, the nozzle being about around 450, and then we go 440, 430, 430, and then the, the rear zone, we usually keep it at 400 or 380 is where we usually keep it at. That way we do not bridge up at the feed throat. But I just wanted to show you guys these different materials, TPE, PVC, polystyrene, um, HTP, which is, this is high density polyethylene. This is high density polyeth or low density polyethylene. If you've never worked with nylons, there's different types of nylons. So nylon 6, nylon 6, 6, nylon 11, nylon 12, um, acrylics, acetals, um, ABS. Everybody's used ABS in, in the future. I mean, in the past, a lot of automotive suppliers use ABS and nylons a lot in their parts um, because they're hard. They're a real rigid part. They're really easy to, to make and they last a long time. So I hope this shows you a little bit of how to do a melt temperature. Like I said, you wanna make sure that your melt temperature um, is accurate. The only reason you take it is to make sure that your barrel temperatures are correct. So your barrel temperatures could be, you could do, you, you, let's say you set all your barrel temperatures, let's say you set them all at 440. And then your rear zone. I've always set my rear zone lower because I want the rear zone to be lower, that way I don't bridge up on the feed throat. Because you got cooling channels that go into your feed throat ring that actually cool that in. So you want to make sure that end's cool, because if you don't keep it cool, it'll bridge up on you real bad. And then it'll melt right up into the feed throat, and then you're, you're going to be messed up. So this way you can check to see how accurate your press is as far as the melt temperature coming out of your press. So you do this and then you can check and see, maybe you have your barrel temperature set at 450 all the way across and then your rear zone low, but you're only getting 430 and you want a melt temperature of 450. So then maybe you have to go up on the heats then on your barrel temperature to get the right barrel temp. Now back pressure is gonna have a lot to do with that too. So the more back pressure you have, the higher you know, your temperature on your melt is going to be too also a lot of people don't understand that so there's so many different things that go into into that but to accurately do your melt temperature purge out three to five times onto a piece of cardboard or onto a piece of plastic or something that you can grab it move your pro your probe around in it do it three or five times and then take it a reading of that and get your average is what I would do. I don't try to just do it one time and then that's what you got. I do it a couple times, make sure. So I hope this helps you guys out. Please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate all the support to the channel and I hope I'm giving you guys the knowledge to succeed. Till next time, peace. Okay, I wanted to show you guys this. I've never seen this before, but they use like a little puck. And they put it in between the nozzle and okay, the. So we're ready to take a purge. Watch First this. Thing we do is open the purge door. Put the puck in. It magnetic. It magnetically attaches. Close the purge door. Now we bring the barrel in. Get ready to make our purge. And take our temperature. We inject. Back up.
barometer gives us the melt temperature with peak. First thing you do. That little puck holds the material in it or something. So you're shooting into the tool or something. Never seen that before. I thought I'd show you guys that.